This is your humble hip hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo, and you already know what it is, man. You're rocking with the best. You heard? Peace, people. I am glad to see you guys are rocking with me today. Let a couple of people pile in. Come on in. Come on in. Hit me with them, larg them likes, those hearts, and all that shit. I wanted to share something with you guys today, man. Um, of course, you know, I am at my favorite store. I cannot stop buying books. I love books, man. Books save my life, man. Books save my life. You know, when, uh, when I first moved to Chicago and then my uncle died and my mom had died uh, previously, I was in Chicago by myself, dude. By myself. I had a small little studio apartment tiny tiny little studio apartment didn't have no one right and uh i found refuge in books and i was in a bit of a depression a uh, uh, funk what's up josh i was in a depression i was in a funk um i didn't have nobody i was in a new state i didn't know anybody the two people that mattered the most to me had passed away my mother and my uncle and it was an Anthony Robbins book. I believe it was called Unlimited Power, bro. That book got me out of this mental funk, this, this dismal state in my life that I didn't see a way out. I didn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. I felt, I felt destitute to just like borderline suicidal right because I, I didn't fucking even want to live no more I didn't give a shit I didn't want to take my own life but I was willing to wild out and that book Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins man helped me out I remember when I was a receptionist and I wanted to be in sales and I asked the salespeople at Bally Total Fitness on Clark and Diversity what do I have to do, man, to get into sales? What do I have to do to get into sales? And they told me, go to Barnes & Noble and pick up a book. What's up, Keon? What? Go to Barnes & Noble's and pick up a book on Zig Ziglar on selling. I picked up that book. I began reading on selling before I became the salesperson. By the time I became got into sales, boom, it helped me out dramatically, right? So it goes to this. And shout out to my brother from another mother, DeAndre L. Rucker, man. Shout outs to you, brother. Boom. He recommended his book. How to be a great boss. How to be a great boss. What up, Derek? Yeah, Zig Ziglar is that dude. That was the first sales book that I've ever picked up. I still have that book. I'm going to give that book to my kids for them to read. So me and me me and uh me and my my brother Dre been talking about books. We always talk about books and stuff. And I was like, "Man, dude, he conducted a meeting not too long ago, right? Um all the supervisors were there. And I'm like, yo, I noticed something different about you, man. You, your, 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 your strategy and your tactics have changed. The way he conducted the meeting was different. And I was like, what caused that change? What prompted that change? You're delegating more. You're not micromanaging as much. And he said, look, dude, I've been reading this book right here. How to be a great boss. I don't even, bro, I didn't even look through the pages. I didn't look through the back. I just went in there and purchased the fucking book. Fuck it. Just give me the book. He said that book has helped him and keep his stress level down. When you're managing 150 people in five different states, it can be hairy. It can be very stressful. And he, the way he's doing it now is more finesse. It's more smooth and shit. I, I like that. You know what I mean? So I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And he's like, this book is teaching me different strategies on how to hold people accountable, how to delegate more. And I'll be honest with you, man. I learned a lot from this young brother. 
I learned a lot from this young brother. So it goes to this, man. It, it leads me to the topic of this video. How I got fired for reading. I was working at a health club called Lifetime Fitness. Anybody that knows about Lifetime Fitness, that shit is an upper scale health, health club. I mean, these motherfuckers got it all in there, right? It is off the chain. So I'm working at Lifetime Fitness, man. And I've been, at that time, I've probably been in health club sales for about almost seven years. So I'm like, dude, I need a change in my life. I can't keep selling fucking health club memberships for the rest of my damn life. And the only thing I can think of is to get my mind out of out of that, that situation of being a health club membership guy. I, I had to change my, my mental, you know what I mean? Before I can change my physical and my surroundings around me. So I went and got a Robert Kiyosaki book called Cash Flow Quadrant. I don't know if you guys uh, read that book or, or seen that book. It's part of the Rich Dad Poor Dad series. It was called Cash Flow Quadrant. I was going and I would sneak off to like the men's locker room and read this book because I wanted to change my life, man. I was tired of being a health club sales manager, health club sales, you know, whatever you want to call them motherfuckers, man. They call them program directors. They have a million names for them. I was tired of just selling memberships. I wanted a challenge. So I would sneak off and I would read. I would sneak off and read. And some of the employees would see me and report back to the supervisor at the time and tell them, hey, man, I just saw a tiger reading a book. And he was like, well, shouldn't he be making phone calls? Shouldn't he be doing this? Yeah, I was, I was checking out. Mentally, I was checking out. And I was going to check out for good. So I continue to indulge in that book, understanding money, understanding how money works, how to be an investor, how to be a businessman. Um, what's the difference between being self-employed and being an independent contractor? Or, you know, so uh, being an employee versus a self-employed versus a business owner versus an investor. That's what the whole cash flow quadrant was. Eventually, I was so indulged in the book on how to get the hell out of there manager calls me in I, I, his name was Van and he was there with J Man Gooba shout out to you J I, I don't even hold you accountable to that shit man but you guys did more for me by firing me than you know they called me in the office they said hey look man we heard you've been you know sneaking off and you know not taking appointments and stuff like that and you've been reading and stuff like that we're gonna have to let you go by they fired me that day um, I went and I collected unemployment and while I was collecting unemployment me and my business partner at the time Harold Merlo shout out to you Harold um, started our own seafood importing business we started Merlo Toledo International. We were importing shrimp and lobster from Ecuador and Honduras. I had to mentally get myself out of selling health club memberships. That is all. Listen, listen. Whatever you're experiencing in your life right now is due from past decisions that you've made. Whatever you're going to experience in the future is a result of what you're doing today. I'm going to let that marinate. Let that marinate, man. What up, Kelvin? Hi, Vanessa Fied. I heard you got to be doing a movie or something, uh, Vanessa Fied. I, 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 like I said, I follow everybody. I get inspiration from every person that rocks with me on my videos. I rock with you guys. I, I'm, some of you guys know I'll just jump on your page and I'll hit a like, I'll hit a heart because your accomplishments motivate me. Your accomplishments and your ventures 
get me charged to continue to do what I do. So I draw off your energy. So keep rocking and rolling. Keep doing what you do. So we, we, we launched that business. We met with investors. We were getting infusion from capital and everything like that. Whatever the I want to curse, but I don't want to curse too much because my wife said I curse too much, man. But I want to tell you guys, go for it. Go for it. I mean, like, don't sell yourself short. Go for the gusto. Bust your gun, man. Figuratively, not literally. But bust your gun and, and take big leaps. So what you go through some hard times? So what people call you crazy or weirdo? So what they think like, you know, you'll never accomplish your goals. Some goals they don't need to hear anyway because you already know they're going to shoot it down. You know how many times people say you can't do that shit? Nigga, I want, I want a goddamn dolphin in my bathroom so I could pet the dolphin while I'm sitting on a stall. How about that? If I could see a guy drive a car... A, a goddamn Bugatti and have a, a a Siberian tiger sitting in the passenger seat. You telling me that shit is impossible? I saw a guy on Facebook go like this. And a fucking kid, a, a goddamn big ass tiger jumps on the damn couch and watches television with this dude. And you're going to tell me I need to think slow? I, I need, I, I need think small all this man all all of that anybody that tells you that you're thinking too big you're 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 dreaming too big uh you need to be more realistic tell them to look at this video so i can stick my middle finger up at him say hey tiger got a got a prize for you this is what he thinks about you telling me that i need to think small so they fired me, man, for reading. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to keep doing this shit. I'm going to keep pounding the pavement. I'm going to keep... Look, I told my client, I told a client, a potential client that he said, Dude, you call me too much, man. Stop calling me so much. I said, there's only two ways I'm going to stop calling you. Actually, there's three ways I'm gonna stop calling. One, you start, you close the deal with me. Two, either you die or I die. Other than that, I'm gonna keep calling you until we close this deal. Until we close this deal. Right? That's the tenacity you have to have to succeed in this world. No fucking the meek will inherit the, the earth. Bullshit. The meek will not inherit the earth. These weak pussies are not going to inherit shit. Not when you have the strong and the bold that are willing to do whatever it takes to take it from the weak. That's like the, the wild, the jungle and shit and, and the, the gazelle is chasing the lion. How stupid would that look? The gazelle is not going to change chase the lion. It's going to be the other way around because the lion is willing to do whatever it takes to eat. Be bold. Take risks. Don't be a pussy. They like it. They like it when you when when you don't work hard. I had I even had to check my brother the other day. He's like, dude, it's Sunday, man. What are you doing? I said, I'm working. He's like, you work too much. I said, no, I don't. This is what gives me life. I enjoy working. Why the fuck you want to take me away from something that I enjoy doing? I enjoy the grind. I enjoy the hustle. I enjoy progressing in my life. Why you want to take that away from me? Let me shine, dude. Let me do me. This whole nine to five shit, 
There's no such thing. That shit does not exist. A nine to five does not exist. I repeat, you have been lied to. There is no such thing as a nine to five work schedule. You grind until the job is done. Until you just can't do no more. And that will never happen until, uh, as long as you have air in your lungs and a, and a beating heart, the grind is never over, man. So this whole nine to five, I stop work or, hey, we're at dinner now, let's not do any business. Fuck that. There's always a good time to do business. I was at a family picnic on Saturday in shorts and chacletas. And I still was conducting business, which probably will lead to doing a deal with an aerospace company. Dealing with Boeing. You think I'm going to stop because it's a family picnic? Oh, it's a family picnic. Let's not conduct any business here today. You got the wrong dude at the picnic. I'm not, do you want to, uh, yeah, chocolates. That's right, I said it. With no socks on either. <laughs> you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm the, I am the son of two immigrant parents, man. We came to this country with nada. Not a damn thing. We came to this country with zero zip zilch. Oh yeah. We mo parle creole. Two immigrant parents here in America. You think I'm gonna just let somebody just tell me I can't do business in their damn family picnic? Are you nuts? Now we're possibly going to be doing business with Boeing. Hmm? So keep pounding your business. You got to you got to upset people. If you're not upsetting somebody, man, you're you're not working hard enough. Somebody got to say, "Why don't you take a damn day off?" You you if nobody's telling you that, you're not working hard enough. If nobody's telling you that you work too much, you working the you're working too hard, you're working too long. Why are you working so many hours? You are not grinding hard enough. I hear that shit every day. I I, I don't think I could go on a vacation and not send some type of email or do something to pro, to get my business to move to the next level. I wouldn't be happy on that vacation. I would feel that you're robbing me of my joy. I don't care how many virgin pina coladas you bring me. <laughs> but you have to do whatever's going to help you and your family today, tomorrow, 10 years, 100 years from now. And you can't do it by having a four-hour work week, as that book by Tim Ferriss says. There's no fucking such thing as a four-hour work week. There's no such thing as a nine-to-five. If you're, if you're checking out at nine-to-five, you better be checking out for one company and jumping into another one. And jumping into another business. Whether it's your business, another company, you better be doing something else. You are living in the best era, the best time of, there's nothing you cannot learn. Anything you want to learn is at your fingertips. A couple of swipes and a couple of minority report. You do all that shit. Shrink. You could do all that shit. Just get it done, man. People gonna try to throw you off your square from from today to the day you die. From today to the day you die, 
you're going to have naysayers, you're going to have haters, you're going to have family members that are trying to sabotage your shit, you're even going to try to sabotage your own shit. You have to do whatever it takes for you to be successful. Why the hell would you want to be anything less than a success? I love you guys, man. Thank you.